So this is, we're looking at pages three and four of the A2 differentiation two pack. And this, this little bit, it's really, really neat actually. Um, sometimes you just can't get an equation with y equals, so you can't get dy by dx. But I can get something else as a, as a differential equation and then potentially just flip it is, is the easiest way to do it. And that's what that's done here. Look, it's just flipped it. So it talks about an expression x equals 2y squared plus y. So if I have a look a little bit further down, right, so it's x on the left, so I've got dx. My variable on the right is y, so dy goes on the bottom. So if I just differentiate it as normal, so 2y squared becomes 4y, and y becomes plus 1. Now, the most basic, basic idea is that differentiation is just a gradient. It's just a fraction, and we can flip a fraction. So let's just flip this then. So dy by dx now becomes 1 over 4y plus 1, and that is it. Now there's a question for you to have a go at, so let's have a look at that one and see how you do. There. So just differentiate it, flip it. Right, let's have a look at example two then now. So example two says find the equation of the normal. Right, so we know for a normal or for any equation of a line, we need a coordinate, we need a point, don't we? And we need a gradient. In this case, we need the gradient of a normal. Right then. So let's try and look at the gradient. So I've got x is e to the 2y minus 3. So if I differentiate it, x is on the left, dx, y is on the right, dy. Remember, if you're differentiating e, just differentiate the bracket, so that's 2, and then write down the original function. Right, so if I flip it now, then that becomes dy by dx is 1 over 2e to the 2y minus 3. There. I could have brought that as a half times by e to the power of minus 2y minus 3. But we'll work like I'm leave it there for now. So if I look when x is e, so I want dy by dx when x is e. I've got 1 over, um, what have we got, what have we got? Oh, hang on, I need an x is e. So for x is e, I can't, I can't put it in, can I? It's the wrong letter. So I've got to hang on a second. What I need to do is find the y value that goes with it. So if I put x as e in there, I've got e to the power 1 is e to the 2y minus 3. So I need a y value, like for like, 1. 2y minus 3, so 4 is 2y, and I get 2 for y. So now, instead of doing x is e, I'm doing y is 2 there. So that's going to get you, isn't it? So that's going to be 2e, 2 lots of 2 is 4, take 3 is 1 there. So my, my gradient of my tangent 1 over 2e. So that's my tangent. So the normal, now be careful with the normal because AQA, like you said, you're using m1, m2 equals minus 1. Because that's telling you that you know that the gradient of the perpendicular times by the gradient of the original line is minus 1. So that then now means that my gradient is minus 2e. There. And if I sub that in, so I know it's minus 2e, and I know it's at the point e, comma 2. Now, we don't like using e's in gradients and points, but it's just like using a number, isn't it? It is just a number. So if we've got y minus y1 is m, x minus x1, then I've got y take 2 is, where is it? It's minus 2e, x take e. And to be fair, if the question didn't tell you to expand it in any other way, all you need to do then is just leave it as it is, which I'm going to do. The completed pack expands it. Now there's a question for you with cos. 
Let's have a quick look. So remember, cos goes to minus sine. Oops. So cos goes to my not working. Cos goes to minus sine, but remember you differentiate that bit and it also goes at the front. So that's where your eight comes from, because it's four times two there. And they've done that. So you can have a look at the completed pack for that. Right then, so that's page three done. So let's have a look at page four then. So page four has got another question for you. So it says start with y equals log x, show that uh, dy by dx is 1 over x. Right, so it's a question for you, but I'm, I'm going to do it. Um, so I've got y on the left, so hang on. Because I'm doing this with the wrong letter, I'm just going to transpose this. So e to the y is x. So that's starting with y equals log x, if I do e of both sides. So now I'm going to differentiate it. So dx by dy is e to the y. That means that dy by dx is 1 over e to the y. But I told you that y is log x. So it's a bit messy, this one. It's like a standard way of showing that differentiating log is 1 over x. So I'm changing the y into e to the log x there. So my y has changed. E and ln cancel out. And guess what? I've just got 1 over x there. So it's quite messy. It's quite strange. So I transformed y equals log x into e to the y's x. And then I differentiated it. So dx dy is e to the y because e doesn't change. And then flip it so it's 1 over e to the y, but y is log x, and it all falls out. Right, let's have a look at this example then. Uh, so it says, find dy by dx in terms of x. Right, arc sine is just sine to the minus 1, that's all. So arc sine is really just sine to the minus 1. Now I want to rearrange it. So I'm saying that sine y is x. And I'm just going to differentiate it. Now whenever I differentiate anything with trig, I always do a little clock face. Which, to be fair, I'm convinced I made up myself. But I probably just got shown it somewhere years ago. There. But it's quite nice, because if I go clockwise, I differentiate. If I go anti-clockwise, I integrate it. So you've learned something for your next pack. Right, so if I differentiate sine, it goes to cos, so that's cos y. There. Okay. Right, so dy by dx, oh, hang on, I've got my signs mixed up here, that's a y there, isn't it? Oof, you're going to have to watch me for that. Make sure that we're clear that it's dx by dy there, not dx by dx. So dy by dx is 1 over cos y there. Right, now you're not going to like this because um, I square a square root to do this. So it's quite funny, it's like a it's another proof, just like the one above. Um, so dy by dx is 1 over the square root of cos squared. cos squared y, I'm going to use my sine squared y plus cos squared y is 1. Now I'm doing this because I want the answer in terms of x. So I need to somehow link it back to sine y is x. That's why I'm doing it. And it's quite messy. So my dy by dx is 1 over the square root of 1 minus sine squared y but I know that sine y is x. So dy by dx is 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. And that's quite tough to see that that bit there is because your sine y is x. Right, I'm running out of time now, but uh, there's no more questions on that page for you to do. But there is this question here for you, but there's no other exercises, I don't think. Okay, well done. See you later.